Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So this video is the installation of the unit that was being made and assembled behind me here on the Ultimate Workbench. So the unit is one meter wide by one meter high by 800 deep. The drawer inside is taken by a pair of gigantic heavy duty runners from GTV. I'll leave a link for you in the description. They are there to carry up to 100 kilos load. This video is all about the installation. It's about putting the bearers down, leveling them up, putting the unit in, leveling that up, getting the trims on, the fascia, dressing it up, making it nice, siliconing from start to finish. I hope you do enjoy. But I do need to say one thing. As I was recording the video, the audio was recorded in high mode, which meant it clipped a little bit. So it's not absolutely perfect, the audio. I have tried to repair it rather than talk over it in my editing editing software. I just thought it would be a bit naff if I did that. So it is definitely doable and listenable. I hope you don't go anywhere. Lots of time has gone into editing this one for you guys. It's a one-off. Please stay with me and watch to the end. I've done that, guys. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the video. Okay, so this is the space where the unit's gonna go. We've got our dust sheets down. Just gonna go outside, just make sure it all fits through the door. Bring it through the door here, and um, yeah, we'll just start fitting those bearers first. We're all in now. We've got our tools and everything that we need. We've moved the unit out of the way. Time lapse on the go. A couple of levels, one to get into that tight space just there. And we've got another one just go front to back if we need it. And we've got a selection of packers. So we're using 18s for the base packers. We're going to use a couple of sixes most likely, and then we've got some threes and some one shims. Um, so we need to get up to around 60 mil to the top of the bearers. And bearers always go down for us rather than feet, um, much more strength. So we're just going to level that line down, the string line of the stairs, because the carcass is going to be flush with the string line. Yeah, it was a little bit of a tricky one because we didn't have much of a margin here. We've got 22 mil trims, I believe. Or 25 so that just needs to sit within that new post and it will so yeah um, Sean's gonna get those lines down mark out the masking tape with masking tape where the packers are gonna go build those packers up put the bearers down level then we'll be good to get this carcass in so Sean's getting his packers down because only, only one person can fit in this little space um, so he's got a two 18s and a six he's resting his bearer on the top getting his level and then he's going to put some shims under in between the bearer and the packers underneath if he needs them he is not too bad there to be honest and then he'll just run his level across to the other end and do the same at the back and he can screw them down with some 50s yeah so that is in now as you can see we've got very small voids as little as we can less wasted space which is great um we've left ourselves about five mil from the skirting and we want this trim to be the same size as this trim which is about 50 mil hence the reason we've left that gap but we're just going to just put it in place as we're going to get a level on the on the string and, and push it down all the way down to the bottom along the sides to make sure that it's all in line then we'll screw it down lots of 50s into the bearers so it's in place now and i'm just simply going to get a square and just leave a very fractional amount up here just half a mil a mil so basically when that trim goes on is not effectively touching that because we've got a sealant bead going up the top because if this draw is coming in and out if there is any movement whatsoever we don't want this trim to be stuck to both faces it's just going to crack a joint over time so by having this carcass forward half a mil a mil from the string it's going to eliminate that and any cracks that may happen in the future. So we should have about 30-ish, yeah, 25, 30. There we go. So we're going to come in about 50 mil to our screws. I mean, it doesn't really matter on this job because you're not going to see inside. And it's the same at the back. We do 50 mil margins. We're going to just pump in as many 50s as we can. The great thing about bearers is it just gives you so much more strength over feet. Plus these bearers have been screwed down to the timber. It's not going anywhere. And it's a really deep unit. It's 800 deep. So yeah, it's gonna be solid once it's all in because it's, well, it needs to be because there's a huge drawer going in. Big old drawer that's gonna go in on these chunky runners. So that's you, the unit done and in. Um, I managed to get more fixings at the back just because there's a, a huge drawer on the front 
you know, just take away any doubt that is um, going to move on us. So pumped in at least 10 there. We've got four nice and even at the front. That is it. Just about to uh, get this draw in. Give us a demo. All the way. Lovely. Full extension. I mean, it doesn't even sag. We are now just going to work out the fascias. Cause shall we just get this um, bottom trim in first? Yeah. Let's do the bottom trim. Then we'll get the fascia in and then we'll wrap around. So we're getting that bottom plinth in now. It's going in nice and tight, which also gives the unit more strength. So when this drawer is out, it's, it's just not going anywhere at all, even without this, but it's just added strength. So that's the top trim ready to go. So I set up my bevel to the angles, cut one. Um, I got my straight edge from the underside, carried that line all the way up, marked it again, straight edge all the way, all the way until it hit the new post and marked it. And then I took my measurements from there to there, but I took it in two measurements. I measured from that point to say that joint and then turn the tape measure out uh, around from that joint, from that pencil line to the joint and added it up. And then I was able to mark that angle on. I double checked my angle because it was ever so slightly different. I adapted the angle and I've cut it. It's ready to go in. I've tried it, it works. Drawer is out. Trim is in three screws. One, two, three. That one was a little bit awkward. We had to pitch screw it because of the heights. And I'm just gonna get this drawer back in and basically it's fascia and three trims. So now with that bottom plinth in, we are packing up to the underside of the carcass. So another six mil there and it will be there because we're going to rest the fascia the draw front on it we need to give ourselves a three mil gap all the way around this fascia and we've got yeah, about three there have we got three here it's not so bad actually and how have you got how's your side there yeah my side's good do we need to go down a mil to give us more tolerance on this top yeah it's just a, just i don't bring, know we'll bring this in a little bit more okay so we're dropping those one mil um, shims out that'll drop and that is the reason why we've allowed this fascia to run through to the bottom so we can adjust in height um yeah so what were you saying take the shims out give that a go yeah Come on then. now we can line it up again at the sides i've got roughly three mil on the side here um yeah that gap's a little bit more I'm more like three mil. I want to give a three. I don't really like the two mil gaps. Too small. Yeah. Um, not enough tolerances. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so we know it works. How about if we just pull that drawer out now? We get those screws in, like we said, from the back. Yeah. We can give it a knock. Come on, then. let's take that off. Pull the drawer out. Half, eh? How many do we do? Four? Four. Yeah, let's go for four. Up here or down here? Just two top, two bottom, I think. Okay. Done. All right, let's slide that back in. Line it up properly once more. Final time. Yeah? Yeah. You happy? It's parallel also. Okay, I think we can commit to that. How about if you just give it a knock where your screws are? Give it a good old bang. Yeah. yeah, I think so. We'll take that off, give it a little pre-drill, and we can screw it up. Yes, lovely. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we can pre-drill those. I mean, we don't necessarily have to, to be honest. Um, and sometimes it's good not to. The reason I think not to is because we just get a much better bite. Yeah. Um, if we've got a nice sharp screw, I don't think we need to pre-drill. We get a nice bite. Let's pull it out. Let's see if we can line up those holes to each other. Okay, so we've managed to locate where those screws have gone back in by pulling the drawer out and just lining them back up. We are simply just going to get one screw at the top, one screw at the bottom, try it in before we commit. But I think we're good to go. We don't need to pre-drill, and I prefer not to if, I, if we don't have to. Right, you hold that, Sean. And you can just... Yeah, you got that. All right, so I'm going to wind that screw out just so it allows that fascia to close up, and then I'm going to go back in. Out once more, in once more. Nice and flush. Okay, so that should be fine. I'm going to come around and hold that side, Sean. You can let go now. Okay, so you're going to do the same. I'm going to wind it out, both of them, because I know they're lined up. 
just to allow that fascia to close up and then in out in once more nice and flush yeah okay so let's see if that lines up now because we've got a screw here and a screw here there we go we've got our gaps yeah three three we have a look around there three so we are good to just open that drawer up now and uh, move these packers out of the way and finish off pumping those screws in yeah we'll continue doing that we've only got another three or four and the reason we went down this route fascia first is because we could get our three more gaps and then we can just put spacers on top of the fascia while we rest that on and glue it and then we can get another three mil spacer in between to give give us our gaps off of our fascia otherwise it was an unknown if we got the trims on first the fascia may not have perfect gaps there we go and that is the detail at the bottom stepped back definitely much prefer that over flush at the bottom okay so this trim has been cut to size and you can just place that on for now you can rest it on top of the fascia if you want well let's get those three mils actually should we get a couple of threes yeah we can just show them what it's going to look like one there and that is the look that we're going for we've got the trim bigger um, again this allows us for well if there were any discrepancies between imagine fascia to the your post fascia to the your post take away three mil cut it also from the tip down tip down done same over there but we've got a little bit of a scribe and then we're good to glue them on and kind of nearly all completio you there we go, 45 minutes there and back. Came across a lot of slowy snails in the cars, little learners, lovely. Um, this is our little system. Two benches, two kettle benches that fold up really small. Just any old board that just sits there, a bit of nine mil because we've got loads of those in the workshop. Choppy usually lives on one side. A track, we can just cut our trims, move it to one side if we need to use the track or put it back if we're cutting to length. And uh, T32, I believe. Mikita plunge saw. Happy days. So I'm going to commit to get this top trim on. So let's remove this. And I'm simply going to get my mitre fast. This part of this, the spray part. And spray as much as I can on that bare MDF. Okay. Don't skimp. It'll evaporate fast as well. Got a few minutes on that. So not to worry. I've just applied the glue part to the trim. I can put plenty on not to make, well, making sure I don't get any too close to the front edge. don't care what it's like at the top because it's going to be non-seen. Non but all we're doing is gluing to the carcass and that is all. That is in now. Nice and solid. We've got our gaps. Starts to take shape. I'm going to tackle this one now. I'm going to do exactly the same. Spray that up, get this in. And then we, we could just work on that. Sean is about to drill this out so we're going center of this run for this handle okay and we're going to drill out with a six mil hole and um, then you can start cleaning up while i scribe that last trim yeah so that's going to go yeah it's going to be quite nice yeah so we just got to figure out where halfway is 1113 so where what's that 556 and a bit yeah Okay, that's all done now. That scribe has been done. Pretty chuffed with Sean's scribe there. And this is all freestyle, by the way. Anyone who's saying getting a new scribe, you jig, yeah. Okay. I'm nah, only joking. I know they're probably good. Never tried it, but just to say that Sean's got a fantastic scribe just by marking it by eye. And the way it butts up there, really good. So basically, we need to just put a bead of silicone across the bottom. Once we get rid of our dust sheets, we will also um, put a bead of silicone across the floor, already done, up against there and the top. Um, well, we did have a little bit of a breakage where the handle broke. Um, I think it's because it's made out of glass, so that will get replaced. But yeah, that's unfortunate. So where we've got a trim joining up against another trim, you get that little black line so i've just simply put a tiny bit of masking tape either side of that line leaving just that tiny black line to show and um yeah little artist brush go over that once and then we can just peel that off and it should just give us a nice crisp joint 
like so. Now I'm ready to silicone that left part of the wall. Right guys, so all done, really happy with it, the way it came out. Everything went exactly to plan, apart from the handle that broke on us, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, so let's go over a few bits. Um, so we got our bearers down, didn't we, to start with, to give us a nice solid base. And because the unit was so deep, we didn't have to fix this carcass into the top, into the sides. It's just too big and deep and wide to have any movement. But we got lots of fixings down into those bearers. And the draw does extend fully. So we've used 800 runners, okay? So it's all in. A lot of people do cut the fascia, so make that part fixed. I'm not really keen on that look. Um, I don't like that cut where people just leave that fixed panel. It doesn't matter. It doesn't get in anyone's way. So to access this, you're going to be here from the side, aren't you? You're going to open it. You're going to get your shoes. It's not going to affect you by having that tip of the fascia left on. And I personally think it looks a lot nicer. So we use 25 mil trims all the way around. Um, and we step back that fascia as you learned from this video and the reason we did step that back is to get that detail there so we got the step back look okay because like I said before if there was any discrepancies you would see them if we tried to make them flush we kind of like stepping back the plinth we like that detail personally and we always kind of stick with that also one thing to mention is I try to keep the border or the trims relatively the same okay so we've got about 50 on the top and i think we've got about 45 ish on the right and the left also at the bottom we've got about 55 so they're kind of all in keeping these are new runners that we've been trying and um, they're heavy duty they're not your standard runners that you get in a standard drawer they are extra chunky extra load bearing um, but as we do push this in, in and out they did have these little rubber grommets in and if i show you one this is what they look like so this is what all runners will have and that helps the draw clip in right at the end we found that they're a little bit too hard to pull out because these are the extra tough extra heavy duty runners they're a little bit too tough so we've removed well we've removed one to see what it was like still a little bit of resistance we tried taking both off one either runner and now it just fits in nicely and what we've done is we put little rubber grommets underneath instead so the paint doesn't hit the paint and you don't get the horrible tapping noise so there is no resistance to be able to pull this drawer out anymore it's not going to fall out it's not going to come out or lean out over time it's nice and level um so i think removing these was a good move on this particular unit got lots of space on the inside and that is it hope you enjoyed the video guys if you have like and subscribe we've also got a membership so feel free to head over to the video description and click on that link other than that have a great sunday see you next sunday take it easy ciao for now